Are you ready for a pixie book? Come on and listen in! With stories full of wonder, it's time now to begin. <laughs> Hello, children! Have you ever heard of a talking cat? Well, today's storybook has a tale that's about just that. <laughs> it's called Puss in Boots. Once upon a time, there was a young man named Carabas. He was very, very poor, and his only possession was a cat, who was also his best and only friend in the world. I have no family, no food, and no money, said Carabas. My life situation is really not funny. And to top it off, my best friend is a cat. Now I ask you, how sad is that? Carabas, how could you say such a thing? cried Puss the Cat. It's a well-known fact that a man's best friend is always his cat. And to prove it, I'm going to help you become happy and rich beyond your wildest dreams. All you have to do is buy me a suit of fine clothing. Puss reminded Carabas of the silver coin that his grandfather had given him for emergency use only. This is an emergency, said Carabas. Buying clothes for my cat? Trust me, said Puss. At the tailor, Puss was fitted with the finest of suits, a frilly jacket, a feathered cap, and long leather boots. Puss smiled and admired herself in the mirror. Of course, she said, I'll need a bag to go with this, my dear. The next day, Puss in Boots, for that's what she called herself now, and Carabas hid in the bushes. Puss put bait into her new bag some parsley and bread, and soon she captured a rabbit and two partridges. I can't wait, Carabas said happily, to eat the birds and the rabbit, all three. But Puss said, oh, we won't be eating a thing. The rabbit and the birds are meant for the king. There's no way the king can be as hungry as me, said Carabas, no way. Hey, hey, said Puss, just trust me. Okay? So, they went to the palace, but only Puss was allowed inside. You see, said Puss, you're just not dressed for a royal visit. I see, said Carabas, but it's not quite fair, is it? So, Puss entered the palace all by herself, and when she returned, she had a story to tell. I saw the king, she said, and he was very impressed with my boots, coat, and hat, with the way I was dressed. And he was thrilled when I gave him the birds and the rabbit, with kindest regards from the Marquis Carabas. Now you see, to be a Marquis is a special thing. It's almost as special as being a king. Me, a Marquis, said Carabas. How can that be? Trust me, said Puss. Okay, but I don't look like a marquee, Carabas said, giving his dirty old clothes a pat. Don't worry, said Puss. I'm working on that. For weeks, Puss and Boots kept delivering birds and rabbits to the king as gifts from the marquee. This marquee is a marvelous man, said the king. I want to meet him just as soon as I can. The king said, in three days' time, I'll be in my carriage, touring the countryside. Puss promised on that date, the Marquis would be by the pond at the edge of the estate. Three days later, they went to the pond. Puss told Carabas he'd need a bath if he was to see the king. So Carabas removed everything from his cap to his socks. But when he jumped in, Puss hid the old rags under some rocks. While Carabas was taking his bath, the king's carriage rolled up the path. Puss cried out, Help! Oh, help! The Marquis is drowning! The key halted his carriage and his guards ran to the pond. They pulled out Carabas, who had not a stitch on. Puss told the king that while the Marquis was bathing, 
Thieves had stolen all of his clothing. The king kept extra clothes in his carriage, so he gave Puss the finest suit to bring to the poor Marquis. Carabas dressed and said, Puss, look at me. I look like a real Marquis. And when the king met the new Marquis, he was just as impressed as he could be. Come, said the king, for a ride in my carriage and say hello to my daughter, who's available for marriage. Then, much to the king's delight, the Marquis and the princess fell in love at first sight. Puss whispered to Carabas, the Marquis, in one hour, bring the king and the princess to the ogre's castle. Carabas was afraid of the ogre, a giant beast with evil, magical powers. But by now, he knew he should trust Puss and Boots. So Carabas set off with the king and the princess, while Puss went off to the ogre's castle. Because she was such a well-dressed cat, Puss was immediately granted an audience with the ogre. Puss said she had heard the ogre could transform herself into a creature of any size imaginable. The ogre laughed. <laughs> yes, large or small, <laughs> yes, I can do them all. Then he changed into a roaring lion, and after that, an elephant. Oh, it's true, said Puss. You can become a beast as large as a house, but surely not a tiny creature. Like, say, a mouse? Oh, I can do anything, cried the ogre. And he became a tiny mouse and ran about the floor. Even though Puss in Boots was very well dressed, she was still a cat. So she pounced on the mouse, gobbled him up, and that was that. When the royal carriage arrived, Puss and Boots greeted them and said, Welcome to the castle of the Marquis. The king and the princess couldn't believe their eyes, and Carabas too was very surprised. The castle of the Marquis, said he. Well, that would be me. Come on in. And in that castle, the Marquis married the princess, and they and Puss and Boots lived there the rest of their days. Happy, well fed, and very well dressed. The end. Oh, what a wonderful story! <laughs> I'll see you next time. If you have a story that you would like to hear, comment below and I'll ask Storybook to find it.